very large companies that have undertaken or failed to undertake effectively mergers and acquisitions in the last few years have been punished for it, and they're quite gun-shy. So I don't think we're going to see any more really large merger and acquisitions for some time, perhaps with the exception of the Glencore Extrata one that's currently underway. But we will see more consolidation at the very low end of the sector, so there will definitely be a place for the explorer that finds a world-class ore body. There will be a home for that, and particularly in the gold sector, valuations are highest for the companies that are the high growth intermediate producers. So they've got the paper that they can use to make those acquisitions and, and have them be accretive. I think we're rapidly moving into a, into a phase where M&A is going to be, become even more important. I think it's, it's been slow, uh, M&A has been slow in this part of the cycle. A lot of the, uh, the larger companies have been loath uh, to put their capital to work with M&A. There's always the question, is it cheaper to buy or is it cheaper to build? Uh, a lot of the big gold companies, for example, are, are strenuously drilling to try and replace uh, their ounces, and that's struggling. They're struggling to do that, but at the same time, they're reluctant to uh, to put too much capital to work on uh, in, t in a takeover environment. In the past, that's actually been quite damaging of uh, of, uh, uh, of their capital base. Um, I think. More likely, we're going to see sort of small, sort of regional consolidations. I mean, we've seen, for example, Silver Lake take over Integra, you know, two adjacent mining operations. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, we're going to start seeing more of the of the um, uh, aggregation in West Africa, for example, and we've seen uh, um, uh, um, Adamus and Endeavour uh, merge, and they've just uh, now uh, put in a bid for for Avion, so producing a nice little sort of potentially five, six, seven hundred thousand ounce uh, producer. We've seen uh, Evolution here, sort of aggregating assets, and I think that's probably the level at which we'll see uh, M and A. Uh, will there be some big ones? Absolutely, there'll be some big ones. Uh, a little bit harder to see, but I think more and more boards are looking at uh, uh, at use of capital and making sure that they don't destroy capital in whatever they do, whether it's putting money into new projects or putting money into, uh, into mergers and acquisitions. We have to take a step back and you have to ask yourself why, does merge, why do mergers and acquisitions happen in the first place, or maybe why should they happen, or maybe why they should not happen in the first place. Um, well, the first one is simply for companies joining forces to save themselves in a cash constrained environment. So so you'll see you'll see a lot of more a lot of more of those activities um, over, over over the next few years, the companies that are just gonna go together out of necessity. Then you've got a universe of trade buyers uh, that are cashed up that can afford to go bargain hunting out there. Uh, you'll see a lot of that gonna happen. Um, I think what is less gonna happen is these multi-billion dollar deals uh, where one company acquires the other just to kind of add another high priced assets and uh, that's cost billions and billions of dollars of consideration. I think most of those deals are going to go away. Um, so it's really about adding, adding new projects to your pipeline at a reasonably attractive valuation in the longer term. Uh, that's the M&A rationale number one. Um, be then uh, simply bargain hunting opportunistically when a company is very lowly valued um, and see uh, mergers and acquisitions out of economic necessity uh, simply because a company alone might become too cash constrained. So I think it's these three types of M&A that you're going to see in the market. Less mega deals but more small and mid cap M&A deals.